Welcome back Deep Beer VTV viewers. So the Fuji GFX100S has just launched and we're gonna do a preview video here for you today. But it is gonna go a little bit different than normal because the fact of the matter is somebody who's a close contact with our family has tested positive for COVID-19. Now, I do wanna say that my family and myself, we're all doing fine. We feel okay, which is great. We're very happy about that. But we do have to stay inside for the next couple of weeks. That's the responsible thing to do. So I'm going to be coming to you from inside the house, talking about some of the features on this camera. You know, just breathing in my own dust and going stir crazy. But Jordan is out in the field enjoying the fresh air and the sunshine and all that the planet Earth has to offer. I'm sure he's having a great time. Well, let's see what this thing can do. So it's Jordan here to talk about the GFX 100S. I'm out taking pictures here at Elbow Falls. Sorry, you might get a little bit of waterfall noise in the mic. But the handling on this camera has changed dramatically from the GFX 100 with its integrated grip. What I'm finding here is it really feels just like a classic DSLR, like a Nikon D850 or a Canon 5D Mark IV. If you're coming from that style of camera, this is gonna be very, very familiar. Fujifilm have made some really nice ergonomic changes to this. I love the deep grip that we've got here and a very comfortable thumb rest on the back. Even using it with these big GF lenses, I find it feels great, very well balanced. On top of that, I really didn't like the back dial on the GFX100. It was really small, felt very cheap. Both the front and back dials on this feel fantastic. Very easy to turn even when I'm wearing gloves. And they're both clickable, but I find I'm almost never clicking them accidentally. If I had a complaint, it's that the AF on button is very flush with the body. It feels okay when you're using it normally, but it's very hard to hit when you're wearing gloves. I prefer the one on the XS10, which is funny because that's a thousand dollar camera compared to this one. Now, if you shoot a lot of portraits, you might be disappointed to find out that there is not going to be a grip option made available with this camera. Now, that's a real shame because the GFX100 had a terrible, very uncomfortable vertical grip on it. The only GFX camera that really is going to offer you a comfortable battery grip option is the GFX50S, which is getting pretty long in the tooth at this point. Now, when it comes to battery life, the GFX100S uses the MPW235 battery. This is the same one that you get in the X-T4. Now, we're actually getting very respectable battery life. We're getting a SEPA rating of 460 shots on a full charge. However, we do want to give you guys some context here. When you got an older GFX100, it came with two batteries in the box, but the 100S is only going to come with one battery. So you're definitely going to want to get an extra one that's going to be extra cost, unless, of course, you're an existing X-T4 user, then you're going to be super happy. So Fujifilm's going to make a smaller and less expensive GFX100. One of the things that did see a downgrade is the EVF on this. They've gone from a 5.76 million dot display down to a 3.69 million dot EVF. Now, I will say that the optics in this are still really good, but there is one trade-off you need to be aware of. With this camera, you can choose between either resolution priority boost or frame rate priority boost. If you go frame rate, you're going to be looking at an 85 frame per second image, which is still really nice and smooth. However, if you want the higher resolution, it will drop you down to 50 frames per second. Because I'm doing a lot of manual focusing out here today, I'm leaving it in resolution priority. And looking at the water, I can definitely see it is a little bit jerky. On the back of the camera, we've actually got a pretty nice rear display. Now, it's not a fully articulating screen. I would have loved that because this is a pretty capable video camera. However, it is a two-way articulating screen. Now, we've complained about these in the past, but it's mostly because they've been really difficult to actually get them flipped out into that vertical orientation. With this, though, very easy to use even with gloves. It's a nice refinement, and I don't mind it at all. Now the image quality off the GFX100 was some of our favorite that we have ever seen off a camera. Chris has been taking a look at some of the images that I've shot with the GFX100S. Let's see what he thinks. 
Now the GFX 100S uses the exact same sensor as the GFX 100. And I mean, this is a great thing. You're getting tons of resolution, excellent dynamic range, great color. I mean, we found this sensor to be very high quality and it's excellent if you wanna do things like studio, landscape, fine art photography. I mean, if your work suits this kind of file size and everything that goes along with that, you now get it in a very compact body. Now Jordan and I both agree that now that we've got full frame sensors that are really pushing 60 megapixels with, again, excellent low light performance and dynamic range, this 100 megapixel sensor is really where you have to go if you wanna see a big improvement. Uh, you know, this is where you gotta go if you're looking at a medium format camera. And again, I'm gonna call it medium format. I know some of you guys like large format. Too bad, it's my show. Now, I've always been a huge fan of Fuji's new classic Neg film simulation they have in a lot of their modern cameras. Now we have a brand new one. It's a new nostalgic negative mode that's meant to mimic classic American film emulsion. So I assume a lot of the nice Kodak stuff from the 70s and 80s. I can't wait to try it out as soon as the GFX 100S uh, becomes an optical precision instrument for taking photographs again and not a potentially deadly fomite for viral transfer. I cannot wait to get my hands on the camera and shoot it. But the fact of the matter remains that all of this image quality, all of these simulation modes, all of this high resolution doesn't matter if the camera can't focus accurately. So let's go back to Jordan. He's going to talk about how the camera's focusing. Since the GFX 100 has come out, Fuji have made some real strides in their autofocus, and those come into the GFX 100S here. The biggest one for me is we have their tracking interface. Now it works like a lot of other brands out there. Just put your focus point on your subject, hit the AF on button, and it's going to start tracking them and it does work quite well. Now I found it's not quite as sticky as something like the Sony or Canon implementations, but it's still worlds better than anything else that you're gonna find in medium format land. And I suspect this camera is gonna be used a ton for portrait work, and that's why the face and eye detection is really important. And when I was doing kind of classic posed portraits, my hit rate was absolutely excellent on it. Where I did struggle a bit is using face and eye detection when I was photographing my kids moving around, and it's tough to lay all the blame at the camera for that because there is a huge variation in the speed that various GF lenses will focus. I suspect if you use something like the 45 to 100, you'd get significantly better results than I did with the new 80 millimeter F1.7. But if you look at the medium format competition that this camera has, it is head and shoulders the most capable if you do need the option to have autofocus tracking, face and eye detect. The only other camera that comes close is the GFX 100 for a lot more money. But one other thing that only this in the GFX 100 can offer is IBIS. So let's see what Chris has to say about that. Now certainly the Fuji GFX 100S is quite a bit more compact than what we've seen out of their lineup, but Fuji has still managed to put in an IBIS system onto the sensor. Fuji is claiming six stops of IBIS performance, and that's without lenses that have IS based in them. Now Fuji is also saying that this brand new system works with the IS in a lot of their lenses. Now, Fuji has said that when it comes to photography, we're not seeing much of an improvement. I mean, six stops goes to maybe six and a half. I mean, it's largely the same. But to talk about video, let's go back to Jordan. Oh, thank God, it's finally time to talk about video. Now, typically I don't really get too excited talking about video on a medium format camera, but the GFX 100S is filming me right now and you can see it looks really good. It's based on the GFX 100, which was definitely the best medium format camera for shooting video. So what did Fujifilm take away from the GFX 100 on this? Well, nothing. It has all the cool features from the GFX 100. We still have all the ports. This even has the ability to record ProRes RAW, which was added to the GFX 100 in firmware. Now it does go through a micro HDMI port, so you're gonna break some cables, but it's very cool that they gave you that flexibility. Now the other thing that I did kind of complain about with the GFX 100 was that when you were panning the camera, the IBIS unit could sometimes fight you a little bit, but I'm actually seeing less of that effect here, and I don't have any lenses with OIS to test, but hopefully it'll be even better if I use it with one of those, like the 45 to 100. Now they shrunk the body, so this thing should be bursting into flames when you're recording 4K video, right? Well, that's another area where this is actually better than the GFX 100. That had a one hour cutoff when you were recording 4K. This actually has a two hour cutoff. Now I wasn't able to fully test that. You only get a little over an hour on the battery, but there was certainly no overheating and no overheat warning doing that. So this means this is gonna be a really nice camera if you're doing long form interviews or even tackling some live music. Just make sure that you've got a spare battery handy or that you're gonna be able to plug it into a USB PD port or even a power bank. So for this price, I probably wouldn't buy this as a primary video camera, but if you need a high resolution stills camera, 
it is really cool to know that you can get very professional video off of this as long as you don't need 4K 60 or any kind of high speed 1080p recording. But I love the picture coming off it. You get that luscious, really big sensor aesthetic. And that's why the GFX 100 is actually a pretty compelling little video tool. All right, Jordan, so we're meeting up here via Zoom so we can keep isolated, but I am jealous that you got to have some time out in the field. So this camera feels to me a lot like what the 50R should have been, or you know, really what it could have been. But how did you find it in the field using it? It's kind of funny, if this was the same price as the GFX 100, I would still pick this camera. Just yeah. the ergonomics, the dials feel better on it. It's smaller, it's lighter. The stabilizer has been tweaked a little bit. I just think it's a better all around package and it's way less money. So, and it's tough. I don't want to just gush about this camera, but it's tough to find a lot to complain about with it so far. So uh, I'm eager to play with it. Hopefully I'll get a chance here in a few weeks. But uh, otherwise, I think we should point out your subscriber challenge is still up before Valentine's Day if we get 300,000, which we're getting close to. And it looks like, my friend, in the lead right now, it's either the 5D Mark II, which I know you wouldn't okay. be too upset about, so I don't want I can that deal. to happen. <laughs> or Pentax camera, which I think would be brilliant. I want it to be the 645Z, but I don't know. We'll just we'll see what happens. Whatever you think I should be punished with, let me know in the comments below. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, do check out deepreview.com. Otherwise, we will see you guys very soon.